It's tough dice. Hi, and welcome to Top Dice. Uh, my name's Aid. I've got Chris with me, and I've got Agis as well, who is going to be telling us a bit about what he actually does. First of all, Chris, to you. Um, how are you doing? Not seen you for a while. I know it's been a while. Um, I'm still, I'm still, uh, still playing uh, advanced fighting fantasy. Still, still planning Alien. Um, I'm still just, well, I'm, I'm just still, you. Just you, yeah. Nothing, nothing's changed. I'm still just carrying on being... Well, in... enough about you, Chris, because it's not <laughs> about you today. Oh. It's about this gentleman oh. there. Um, so, right. Agis, um, great to meet you. I believe you've got a project in the offing that you'd like to tell us about. Go yeah. for it. All right. So, first of all, thanks for having me. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. And you and uh, Christopher as well. All right, so yeah, I'm Agis, I'm the director of um, uh, RPG Stories VTT. Um, it's our flagship um, product, actually. And next week on the 16th of April, we are running a Kickstarter campaign for RPG Stories. Basically, this is an, uh, this is an expansion campaign. So the product is already there. It's already out, available on Steam. And after two years um, of... I will say success because it's going pretty well. We yeah. decided to go to Kickstarter and make an expansion campaign uh, for two reasons. The first is because we want to offer more um, and we are looking for the budget to do so. Plus, we want to promote it again and try to attract newcomers to get to know us. And uh, that's why we are giving the opportunity to pledge uh, for the original version as well as for the expansion as well, uh, in case newcomers uh, arrive and land in our uh, page on Kickstarter. So yeah, that's the project. RPG Stories is a 3D VTT. Um, and basically what you can do with it is you can build, uh, as we like to say, any almost any possible indoor or outdoor environment but not only for D&D, &D, we, we equally support other um, eras like sci-fi and modern. And more specifically, um, our dice panel and our model support D&D, uh, oh, uh, &D, Hero Quest uh, board game, uh, obviously Pathfinder, um, any cipher system, um, Alien, Walking Dead, Blade Runner, and now with a new campaign, we're aiming to bring more themes in. So that's overall. You get to Brilliant. build in a 3D environment, fast and easy, and then invite your friends and play. Um, and that's what RPG Stories VDT is all about. Okay. Well, that's a good start on that. Now, I must say it does look very pretty. I'm going to throw that out straight Thank away. Um, how long did it take you to originally create the, the original program because it looks like it was quite a venture was that well uh for the um early access version um if if someone goes on steam they will see that we are still on early access but that's a kind of a lie uh we are moving forward now to full release before the Kickstarter campaign uh, so everything is there so for the early access was a year or so and now we've been developing the software for a year and a half to two years. The reason it went so fast and it was successful, basically it's because of my team. Um, all of them, including me, were working in the video gaming uh, industry before that. So I decided to create this company and I literally chose the dream team from the people I knew from the industry. So all the devs and all the artists our experienced have created games in the past. So we kind of knew um, how to do it and how to avoid all the mistakes a studio does when you know they launch their first project. And I have to admit that my lead developer, uh, Zotos, is an amazing guy and I'm really, really lucky to have him. So yeah, we avoided the mistakes. And yeah, it was, it is actually because we are on you know, an active development. Uh, two almost two years of really hard work, and it shows. It really, really does show. Um, on the the role playing side, how long have you actually been a role player? Oh, 
So my first D and D game was uh, in the nineties. I was I don't know, fourteen years old or something. Now I'm forty, so it's been twenty six years. Right. Well, that's a lot of experience to actually sort of put in to getting yeah. this product right. You're not just uh, 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 in for a couple of years and going, oh, we'll give this a shot. So you've got quite a lot of experience of tabletop role playing and yeah. how it should actually look and how it should actually sort of work. And it's, I must say that that's the challenging part because um, when you're not creating a video game and you're creating a virtual tabletop, you have to um, take under consideration that each game master or dungeon master see things differently. They want to build things. They want to have their own freedom to move things around. And then when it comes to the actual gameplay, like you invite your friends and you are online to play, there are several questions uh, to be asked. I'll bring just one example that we had a lot of meetings with the team. So since this is a 3D virtual tabletop, the characters are 3D models that get to walk. So it's not in top view necessarily. You can move the camera. Um, and see the 3D environment around you. So the 3D characters walk, but the question is, do they walk through walls? Or do you place colliders and you know forbid them from entering the wall? Yeah. And what if they cast a spell and now they're um, capable they of can't. doing so? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so these are things that, you know, they're pretty easy to solve when you're creating a video game, but when you want to give the experience of, um, role-playing games, tabletop role-playing games, it gets complicated. So we follow the road where we leave um, a lot of space for the dungeon masters to manually create things. Obviously, there are auto ways, but slowly we are adding features where we allow the dungeon master or the game master to do literally whatever they want. So, you know, uh, they have a lot of options. And that was the most challenging part, to try to envision how you can bring something that when you play it around the table, it's fantastic. When you play online, it's not the best experience. I understand that. But since we are doing that now, uh, after COVID especially, we are trying to approach the, you know, the table side of it as much as possible. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to pass to Chris because now he's got a few questions. But I'm going to get a bit more in here just, just for this, this time. Yeah, you're right. As in COVID really has... Um, made a change in the way we play and uh, even I have, have gone online a bit uh, in the past couple of years because of the way things actually were um, I've, I've used Roll20 and a couple of other different systems and I must admit uh, for the most part I found them a bit lacking this is why I'm quite excited about what what you're doing and the experience that you and clearly your team are actually sort of bringing to this one um so yes i've I've played online but the great thing i see about online it's bringing together people from literally across the world yeah so this is something yeah it's great sitting around a table and yes that is the preferred way for many people and for me as well however it's such a great way of connecting with so many different people and this is what you're actually sort of bringing to it in so many different ways and with a positive sort of look to it as well. So as far as I'm concerned, this is going to be a bit of a winner. Chris, I know that you're actually uh, actually done quite a bit of look at this. I'll pass it over to you. Is there anything you just want to ask? Yeah, uh, I'm I'm quite visually driven with sort of games and things like that. And Good. you know, that's the first you know that's the first sort of thing that I kind of picked up on. You know, with you know with this whole program. Um, and I, I, I was just wondering what, what have you, what have you decided to sort of like, uh, what's, what are you doing differently? To yeah, that, that's a question we get a lot. Um, and I understand why. And I must say the community is asking that question, like, like you, you advertise your product and people come and ask you that exact question. Why is this different from, I don't know, any other product? So when it comes to, um, I'll be really honest because that's what we do as a team. 
and we really want to be transparent. So when you compare RPG Stories VTT to a 2D VTT, like Roll20 Foundry um, or Fantasy Grounds. Yeah. So what you lose with RPG Stories is that you don't have um, uh, the easy way, like drag and drop an image in, uh, ignore all the buttons and just play viewing an image and moving tokens. It gets more complicated because you have more tools. Plus RPG Stories doesn't support rule sets at the moment. And that's that's one of the main reasons we're doing this Kickstarter campaign to bring a rule sets into our system. So when you compare it to other three DVDs, where basically these are, let's say, competitors, what's different with RPG Stories is this. So um, we have many more models in our library due to the, um, to the way our system works. So what we're doing is that we are um, buying these 3D models from other artists, changing them a little bit to match a specific art style we have, and then uh, throw them in our database. So that's why we're moving faster than others. Uh, I don't want to say names because all of them are wonderful uh, programs. That's what's different. So the second thing that is we're doing differently is that we are trying to support certain games. So our dice panel has the alien dice, all free league dice, let's say. Um, when we are implementing models for the sci-fi era, we check, okay, can this be for alien RPG? Can this be for Blade Runner? So we are trying to throw stuff in a database and in a library that will actually support games, not eras in general. So we are not like another 3 DVD that says, we support all eras, but eventually we have 80% D&D and some modern models and some sci-fi models. We are trying to be specific. So, and that's another example. So far, as a team, we feel that we support Call of Cthulhu a lot, especially uh, 1920s. Now we are trying to bring in nowadays modern models because we understand that people play superhero games, let's say, for example, or nowadays, or Vampire the Masquerade. Um, the other thing that we are surely doing different is that we allow our community and any, anyone that buys RPG stories or support us on our Kickstarter campaigns gets to vote on the next features we are implementing. So we are doing a lot of polls. We're doing monthly um, dev diary vlogs where we explain uh, what we're doing, what we did the previous month, and what are the plans for the next month. Uh, we care a lot about the community. That's something that we um, seen people really appreciating and me mentioning that, hey, we've never seen that. Well done, guys. Basically, we answer to everything right away because this is our life. That's what's different. Uh, now with this campaign, we're going to bring even faster ways to build. And the last thing I want to say is this, that as a 3D virtual tabletop, we also allow you from next week, <laughs> just before the Kickstarter campaign, we are going to give a free update and allow people to upload the 2D images. Brilliant. Turning this to a 2D VTT as well, because you know anyone can upload their 2D images and play with uh, in top view, in um, into the version of RPG Stories. So yeah, we are trying to um, create a software that we can proudly say that all you need in one program. That's that's a goal, um, and it's going well for us. We we are happy with the result. Good. Well, look, that's I think the important thing. Um, is there anything further, Chris? From you, anything um, further you wanna? I was I was just wondering what your uh... What your inspirations were for this pro, you know, for this project, to be honest. Yeah, so it's funny because it's one of these things that. So before I work in the gaming industry, I was in the music industry, and in the past, I have. You can see from the back there. I can see the guitar. Yeah, yeah, I still record. <laughs> so one day I went to the studio and I was like really happy. Um, and I said to our guitar player in the band I was in, uh, I have this amazing song and the riff goes like that. And he turned to me and said, that's Pink Floyd. So 
That's exactly what happened with RPG Stories. So I we were playing in Roll20 and I was thinking, because we are we were creating in the company I was working in a role-playing game, um, but a video game meaning. So, and I was thinking, wouldn't it be fantastic if we were in a 3D environment and you could move the camera and, you know, like Diablo or like Path of Exile or, yeah. and be able to move your character. Yeah. And at the moment that I thought that, because I knew I had the budget to create my own company, I said, this is it. This is what I'm going to do. And in my head, I thought that there is no other 3 DVD tell out there. I had no idea. And there was Tellspire, um, a Dungeon Alchemist, which is not a VDT, but it's a 3D wall builder, basically. So I was so happy with my idea. And I thought like this will be like a bestseller because it's my idea. It wasn't my idea after all, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so I'd say that what we are trying to do, like by inspiration, is a mix of after you create what you create. Uh, it looks, our world building methods look, look a lot like Dungeon Alchemist. But when you go to multiplayer, um, we want to give, we are trying to give two different modes. The one resembles more like uh, old fashioned games like Eye of the Beholder, like with uh, first person, yeah. where the, you cannot see your character, but you see in front of you everything. Yeah. And the other is the asymmetric uh, 3D type like Diablo, where the dungeon master decides if you are allowed to move your camera or not if yeah. it stays still or if the camera follows you. Um, I'm a Diablo guy. I have to admit that. That I mean, Diablo 2 um, ruined my life <laughs> back then. Yeah, yeah. Mine as well. Yeah. <laughs> it was Everyone's. Iron Beholder for me on the Amiga back in the day. So there you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you've also got, uh, it gives me uh, Fallout 1 and 2 vibes as well. I don't know whether anyone's mentioned that it's just yes um, it just it's got that it's got that sort of like that lovely guy like, like old school vibe which i quite like quite yeah like. we we are old school guys the truth is i mean i get the feeling of, yeah yeah we cool. are cool um well, what, what i will say i'll just jump in here chris to get chris on side for online gaming it just shows what an amazing product you've actually sort of got there. So, um, so uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just because um, I'm, you know, like I said, I'm very, very visually sort of um, triggered. Yeah, triggered. Yeah. I would say, yeah. Um, if I don't like it, it's like literally, you know, you know, the curtain drops, and you would you would have been told already. So, like I said, this is a huge <laughs> yeah, thumbs so. up here. I'm happy. <laughs> I adore the the whole you know the whole aesthetic of it is just it's it's really pleasing. Um, the interface that I've seen for you know the various pictures you know for you know the uh, you know the research that I've done it just doesn't look very cluttered and complicated because that's one thing that really puts me off um, is sort of this sort of like uh, this kind of like visual sort of overload. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, what button do I press? Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand that. Uh, yeah. And we, we are, I, I'm personally proud about uh, the UI UX because we've worked a lot of it, on it. And one thing that it, it doesn't, if you don't really play with RPG stories, you cannot get it. But it's even easier for the player because we understand that most game masters nowadays use tools like this. They can pretty much understand them. Uh, but then the players usually don't have like, they are not PC gamers necessarily. So they log in from a, an older laptop or whatever, and they need something really simple. So the player has all the options if they like, but they're hidden. All they see is the dice, the character sheet, and you know, the a few numbers, um, yeah, their hit points, their level, and they just click to walk, uh, and they can move the camera with their mouse. That's it. We are trying to keep it simple as much as possible. It's okay. getting harder sometimes because, you know, uh, when you are in the business, because after all, you know, this is a product, you see your competitors bringing new things in. So you are trying to catch up or you bring a new idea and then the competitors bring another idea. So yeah, 
you get a, more buttons and we are always struggling of how we can keep it simple, keep it small, because it can be overwhelming. And we understand that. I think yeah. you, I think that's a hundred percent positive selling point on this particular yeah. product. Um, any last comments uh, about uh, about the product? It's obviously buy it. That's a get involved with the Kickstarter. Uh, yeah. uh, what what I will do, um, I will stick some links at the bottom of the video if that's okay. If you can send me some yeah. link, I know that one yeah. already. But anything you've got on that side is a way of pushing it so people can link through and see. Yeah. The other thing I'd like uh, at some stage is possibly in a couple of weeks' time or so, once everything's up and running and, <clears throat> and maybe been, uh, been going and running for maybe a week or so, I'd love you to sort of come back and possibly mm. demonstrate, if you could, yeah, uh, a five-minute demonstration yeah. of how it actually works. Maybe yourself and even one of your colleagues or a couple of your colleagues could join us and you could actually... Uh, mm show and tell as well so yeah. the offer is actually there yeah. um i'm honored thank you very much any oh. support we can actually give we'll be more than happy it's all about games for the gamers and this is ticking the boxes yeah. um however we're not quite finished with yet i think chris is going to be asking about your favorite role-playing games yes um go on chris get the yeah. other thing <laughs> uh we'd like to know what you what your favorite three role-playing games are three played or or run all right so um the truth is i'm a forever game master so yeah i Same. rarely yeah. i rarely get to play as a player um so i have to say that after a long 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 time of role playing we with my best friend we figure out that almost every role playing game is good but nothing compares with a good dnd game so if I had to say my number one, that would be Dungeon, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition. That's we're having my... you back. We're definitely having yeah. you back. There we go, Chris. There go. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's my favorite edition. I still play 2nd Edition. And that's, I mean, that's for me the, the best there is yeah. out there. So number two, I'm between, no, no I'm not between. I'll say Pet Dragon. I don't know if you've ever tried Pet and Dragon. Oh, yes. I really, oh, yeah. okay. yes. I really like it. Um, yeah. And free, I was about to say um, Call of Cthulhu, but I recently played Alien. And You're definitely coming back, sir. It won my heart. <laughs> well, I, it's a fantastic, balanced role playing game. The rules make sense, the setting is amazing. Yeah. You don't even have to have watch the movies or be fan of it to get in and play. And yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic system. I mean, I loved it. Well, <clears throat> that's three systems there from there are no, three there different are no eras. Ones. So I love it. Um, Those are the really right. Do. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. and it's good to sort of see that there's so much energy and synergy with the older games as well as the new from you as well. So uh, so very, very definitely. Look, well, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Pleasure uh, all I'm mine. looking forward to actually seeing you back. And um, we'll, uh, we'll catch you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.